All right, welcome back. And this day we're talking about elastic audio. This could be just hours and hours of fun, uh, but I'm going to try to sum it up in a relatively short amount of time, which will be very hard to do. First of all, we're going to be working with the Ugly Duckling project, which we've been working with in class. Um, you see it on the screen here. One thing that you might not know is that there's a hidden track up here. If we go up to the track list, look at this, working dialogue. Do you see that in here? I do not. Uh, that's because it's a hidden track. It's the only track that doesn't have a, the dot lit up. Click on that, boom, there it is. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to open up my edit view selector. So I would like to see the inserts. I would like to see the input output. I just like seeing that stuff. There we go. Okay. Okay. So basically this project had a, um, some working dialogue, uh, that they matched the, uh, actor's voice to. Um, but we're going to use elastic audio to try to b make them be exactly the same tempo. Basically what elastic audio does, is it takes audio and it stretches it out or it shortens it but keeps it sounding the same in the past in editing programs if you basically took an audio clip and you stretched it out it made it sound slow or if you sped it up it made it sound fast elastic audio in pro tools what it does is it basically analyzes the audio clip and if you make it longer it stretches it out and it calculates the amount of stretching it's doing and balance that out with the, the proper amount of pitch shifting that keeps it sounding the same. So if an actor um, basically does their ADR a little too fast or a little too um, slow, you can use elastic audio to sh shrink it or expand it just enough to fit into the basically the talent's mouth on the screen. So it's a good way to basically fix something that doesn't sync. If your uh, music runs out, maybe say like five seconds too soon, use Elastic Audio to stretch it out. You won't hear a difference in the song. It, unless you know it like the back of your hand and then the, you'll be the only one that knows that it's playing a tiny bit slower because the pitch will not be shifted. It's like magic, this thing. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna make the working dialogue be go a little faster to match the speed and tempo of the actual dialogue just so you can see how everything lines up so this is what you do at the beginning this is all your track information right here every track has a little icon right here called the elastic audio plugin selector any track can become an elastic audio track any track and any clip can get stretched or compressed to the time length that you want it to uh, fit into. So we'll turn it on here. And when you turn it on, you'll see you have options. Polyphonic, rhythmic, monophonic, varispeed, and X-form. Um, basically, what you need to know is this. Polyphonic is going to be the most, generally the most versatile one. It's real time, and it's for fairly complex sounds. By complex sounds, I mean music, and voices that vary in pitch. Rhythmic, if this was a drum track, like and you just wanted to speed up the rhythm or slow it down, rhythmic is what you want. Monophonic is literally for someone who speaks in a monotone, a voice that does not basically have any variance at all. Varispeed, I really don't use Varispeed too much. And then X form. Next form you'll see it says rendered only. That basically means that it's such a complex operation that you need to render it if you want to hear it. But that usually means it gives you the best results. Anything that you have to render in like a lot of video programs, for example, usually mean it's more complex and will give you something just better quality, better resolution, better quality. So what I like to do is I like to put it on polyphonic and then once I uh, narrow it down to the exact elasticity that I want, then I switch it to X form quality maximum, and then I render it. And 
then that way I know the quality is best. Because one thing Elastic Audio, you can't stretch it too far. Just like a rubber band that stretches too far, if you try to stretch a 30 second song into a 60 second song, it can only go, I forgot what the actual numbers are, but you don't really want to stretch it above 20, 25%. You don't want to double it. You don't want to triple it. You want to basically make a 10 minute song, maybe, or I'm sorry, you want to make a 10 second song, a 12 or 13 second song. You want to make a 10 second piece of dialogue, maybe be seven and a half or eight seconds. Anything more or less than that, you're gonna start noticing what we call artifacts. So since we have clicked on this icon and chosen a uh, Elastic Audio type, we have applied Elastic Audio to this track. That's all there is to it. We have, it is now applied to the track. How do we know? Right here, when you click on Waveform, now we have more options. Click on Analysis. Look at this. We have all of these markers in here. These markers, as you, as you see, happen at the transient points. Elastic Audio analyzes your waveform and finds the transient points. And for those that don't remember, the transient points are basically the points where the audio spikes in amplitude. See, right here, right here, right here. That's where the audio changes in amplitude. But if you go to warp, um, basically all these are what we call warp markers. These warp markers, see what I'm doing? Allow me to move the audio. But as you can see, the waveforms themselves, um, they're just kind of compressing or expanding uh, to make them shorter or longer. But if we listen to them, watch, I'm gonna make it a little shorter. And then let's uh, go back to waveform and listen to it. We'll go ahead and solo it. Oop back to the smart tool all right it's making a sound like raw raw no raw yes okay let's go back to where it was originally this is where it was originally it's making a sound like raw raw no raw see the pitch has not shifted it's just being said faster so if you're trying to basically scrunch or stretch auto to fit into a, uh, a little segment of time, for example, ADR, this is huge for ADR, or music, maybe you're trying to stretch or shorten your music to fit in, into a very specified time frame, this is perfect for that. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to match this, this audio up to this audio because it, so we listen to both they're not in sync with each other. It's making, making a sound, sound like, like raw, raw, raw. See, the working dialogue is a little slower, so we're gonna make it faster so it matches that. Here's how you do it. Once again, let's go into warp. So what you're seeing here, all these lines, these are what we call event markers. This is where an event happens. Um, an event in this case would be um, whenever the audio changes drastically. In other words, a transient point where the amplitude spikes from something that's relatively quiet to something that's relatively loud. That is an event. We want to add a warp marker because we want to warp specific parts of um, basically this waveform. And when we warp it, that gives us the flexibility to change its timing. And you can take these event markers and you can change them to warp markers. I'll explain what that is in just a second. See this right here? See how the cursor changes from the grabber tool to basically a tool that lets me stretch it out like that? Well, I want to change this one because this is the one I want to really push back at because as you can see, it's very out of sync. So I'm going to say add warp marker and that event marker is now a warp marker. When I click on the warp marker, Look at that, the whole thing kind of squishes together, kind of like an accordion, right? If you want to have more, and when you do that, watch what happens. See how the first part of this dialogue is lining up a little bit better? Okay, but if I want to get more specific, I can basically take this, make this a warp marker, and now watch what happens. This acts like a little wall, and I could take this and line it up directly beneath that. And then I could take this 
and push this back. And now this lines up with that. And it looks like this one could stand to be a little closer. So I will actually add a little warp marker here so that doesn't move. And this could be a little closer. And this could be a little closer. So now I've basically, using the uh, Elastic Audio functionality and putting this in warp mode and adding warp markers, I was able to fine tune each word of the working dialogue in this little segment right here to match the basic tempo and rhythm of this. So now let's listen to the dialogue, the part that did not get modified. Oop. It's making a sound like rah, rah. Okay, and now let's listen to the uh, part that I modified. It's making a sound like rah, rah. Sounds like it's pretty close, right? Let's play them together. It's, it's making, making a sound, sound like rah, rah. rah. It, it's, it's making, making a sound like rah, rah. rah. One no, more no. time. It's, it's making, making a sound like rah, rah. rah. Pretty good, huh? So that's what the Elastic Audio does. Uh, you can fine tune specific words and bring two words closer together. If an actor basically spoke too slowly, you could do the opposite effect. You can make music longer or shorter. And like I said, the difference, uh, the thing that you might be noticing that is huge is in any other program you've used up to now, whenever you stretched or shrunk audio, it's changed the pitch. So they sound low or they sound high. Elastic Audio does not do that. And then if I really want him, and we've listened to it, it sounds good. Polyphonic, for most cases, sounds it's great. It's making a sound like rah, rah. But if I want to just really make sure that it gets rendered at optimum quality, I just switch this over to X form, and then I render it that way. When you click on this, it'll render it, but it'll render it in the background. And this, there's up here in the counter window, there's this little circle right here. You might have wondered, what is that? That's kind of like your activity monitor. When you're rendering something or Pro Tools is processing something, this lights up and kind of circles around and lets you know that it's working. And then when it's done doing its little, like, you know, lighting effect, then the rendering's done. So let's watch what happens. Watch this little lighting effect when I click on X form. See, it's doing it, it's doing it right there. Boom, that's done. Now I can play it. I, I checked that already, sir. sir. It's, it's making, making a sound like rah, rah. Now, when it's on X form, like, oh, this sounded a little early. I can bring this in a little bit. When you do that, watch. It needs to process it again because I changed it because I'm on X form and X form only works when it's rendered. But that's okay because the result is awesome. That's why you want to fine tune it all under one of these other Elastic Audio parameters. Um, polyphonic, pretty much you're going to use all the time, except if it's just a drum track or just a beat then it's rhythmic. But polyphonic, it's great for voices, it's great for music, it's great for music and voices together, um, and it doesn't require rendering. So there you go. Um, Elastic Audio, this is scratching the surface. It's just something that you should play with a little more um, in your spare time, and you definitely will when you find that your ADR isn't quite perfect. It can actually make it quite perfect. Okay, thanks.